ever wondered what would happen if Goku were to enter the Bleach universe? Or in other words, if Ichigo Kurosaki was to meet with son Goku, how would this affect everything? And how would this change the Bleach timeline? How would it affect Dragon Ball Z timeline? Well, you're in luck. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what if Goku entered Bleach world. In other words, what if Goku has been sent to the Bleach world? We're going to make a story of how he got there, but this will be interesting because now Goku will be inside the Bleach world trying to adapt to the Bleach universe, seeing Reishi, seeing Soul Reapers and everything like that, or wrong cars. It's going to be a very interesting what if and I cannot wait to do this. I have made a what if a few months ago called what if Goku landed in the Naruto verse and now it's time to give Bleach one of my favorite anime a go at it with a crossover of Goku and Bleach. How will this affect Goku's life and how will this take place and how would everything go accordingly? So I'm actually kind of excited to show you guys what would happen before we begin. Please click the bell so you'll be the first thing when the next episode comes out and drop this video over a thousand of likes. The goal for this video is to get at least a thousand of likes. We're going to need your guys' love and support for this series. Please drop that thousand likes so we could continue on to the next part. And I guarantee you, you're going to not regret it. You're going to really love this series. If you haven't checked out my backstory, Hero of Z, it is pinned inside the comment section below. Please check it out, click it, and see it. Trust me, you're going to really enjoy that series. Well, what are we waiting for, guys? Let's begin the what if of Goku and Bleach crossover. Inside the Dragon Ball Timeline Goku has just got his Super Saiyan God power. And with that, him and Beerus, the destroyer god, were going at it back and forth. Since Beerus wanted to have a fun battle and see where a Super Saiyan God stands against him. After all, he did prophesy that very soon he'll be fighting a Super Saiyan God, and that day has come to be today. With that, with each landing blow, Goku and Beerus were creating a rift in the sky. That rip belongs to another dimension. That's how strong Goku and Beerus' power were each time they clashed with one another. As it started to get a hole, and that hole got bigger and bigger. But the funny part here is no one noticed this hole. It is something that Goku and Beerus created while they're fighting outer space. From there, once when their battle has come to an end, and both of them had a mutual understanding, Beerus has left right back to his planet, while Goku went right back to Earth relaxing with his loved ones, and it was time for him to go continue his training and continue doing his farming work for his family. Until Goku realized something is off in the sky. He saw that the sky was really clear but there's a small black hole that's showing in the sky and he started to wonder what that is. To his curiosity, Goku decided to go check that black hole out. As he went and he saw, it was a huge black hole that kept getting bigger and bigger. Seeing that got Goku really worried as he didn't know what to do and so he decided to go and call Whis and see if Whis can help him after all. Whis is an angel and he'll know what to do in this situation. Before Goku can contact Whis, the black hole started to have suction as it began to go and suck Goku inside the black hole. Goku tried very hard to not get sucked as he tried to use all the power he can to escape but unfortunately for Goku, it went and sucked him inside as he has vanished along with the black hole. There was no trace remaining of both Goku or the black hole. It is like he never was in the universe. He has disappeared like a ghost. No one had no idea what happened to Goku. All his loved ones assumed that Goku was at King Kai training, while King Kai thinks that Goku is at his own planet relaxing. So no one knows that Goku has been gone, but Goku himself knows, as he has no idea where he is, and when he woke up, he seen nothing but darkness and said, Huh? Where am I? What is this place? It's so dark! Goku then saw an opening from the sky, as he was able to see light and he saw daylight and sky. From there Goku quickly went and he flew past that as he found himself to be in a small town known as Karakuro Town. He has arrived to the Bleach Timeline. From there Goku quickly went and he began to search the entire planet by using his key senses but he was not able to pick up no key. He was not able to pick up any power level. With that Goku was very confused and said Huh? This isn't my home? What's going on? Where am I? This is such a weird place. And why can't I sense Chi Chi or Goten? Or even Gohan? As everyone was watching Goku since he was kind of acting out of character 
And with that, Goku began to go and use his senses, but like before, he was not able to pick up any power level. No Chi Chi's power level, not even Vegeta. Goku then began to trip out, and he began to believe that he has arrived to a place through that black hole that which has been created during his fight with Beerus. From there, before Goku can do anything, Goku then saw two bright light has shine coming all the way from a field. He then saw that it has disappeared as he could sense a very high type of intense power coming at that area. He was not able to really sense Reishi's which Soul Reaper has, but he was able to sense the pressure and the spiritual energy that is creating from there. Goku then decided to go check that out, perhaps they might help him out or even see what's going on. Once when Goku got there, he saw two Aronkar has arrived, as it was Yami and Okiyora. They have come here to do some research and in the mix kill whoever they want to kill. Yami was very bored so he began to go and suck out all the souls of the people that were on Karakura town. Goku saw that and he was surprised to see what's going on and said, Whoa, those are a lot of soul. I wonder if they're returning back to King Yama. With that, Goku then saw that Yami was about to go and suck the soul of Orihime and Chad since they came to try to stop Yami and Okiora, but Yami easily went and decked them to the ground and from there he began to suck their soul, trying to absorb it. Before he can do that, Goku was about to go step in but then he saw someone has arrived to save the day as someone went and they used their Zanpakuto to block Yami's head. So you're the bastard who's trying to hurt my friends, huh? I'll kill you right here. Ha! Ichigo Kurosaki! We know all about you! I'm here to test to see how strong you are against me! Come and fight! Before Yami could blink, Ichigo went and used Bon Kai! As Ichigo went and he used his Bankai. Upon using his Bankai, Ichigo went and he rushed at Yame as he striked him with his sword. Yame got sent flying but when he came right back to attack Ichigo, Ichigo went and he cut Yame's arm out just by using a slash attack. After having his arm cut out, Yame got really pissed off as he began to have a lot of rage and from there, he went and he was about to punch Ichigo. Ichigo was ready to go and block it but out of nowhere his body froze up. Since he was having a duel with his inner hollow, it continued conflict with his actual power and from there he couldn't move. Yame used that towards his advantage and he began to go and attack Ichigo. Ichigo got dead a couple times by Yame as he fell right towards the ground. Or he may try to help him but Ichigo told her to stand down and from there Yame went and he stomped on Ichigo. Goku saw that Ichigo needed help so he intervened to the battle. As Yame went and he powered up his fist and he was about to hit Ichigo but everyone saw, Goku came and he caught his fist and said, Sorry, but I won't be sitting around here to see you attack this young kid any longer. What the? Who the hell are you? What the? Who is he? Why he we have no data on him? Wherever he is, he has unnecessary forfeited his life. He could have ran and we will never know about him. <laughs> no way! Why run away from someone you're not even afraid of? <laughs> this guy's really cocky, Ukiora! I'll kill him! With that, Yame went and he tried to strike Goku, but Goku instantly dodged it. Everyone was shocked to see who Goku is, as Kisuke Urahara and even Yorichi has arrived to the battlefield, but they were distracted by Goku. For the very first time ever seen a man with the orange and blue gi came out of nowhere and he managed to attack and even hold his own against no one other than a Ronkar? We understand regular soul reapers but this is a Ronkar we're talking about. Their power base is just as strong as a captain from the 13 core god squad. From there Yame went and he tried to strike Goku as he's getting really angry that why Goku is not being able to be phased by his attack but Goku kept dodging it. Everyone noticed that Goku is not human. Nor is he a Soul Reaper or Quincy. Who is he? 
And how is it that he's able to see the dead if he's not a human or soul reaper? From there, Goku noticed something strange about his body and said, What the? Why is it I cannot use most of my ki here? It's like my body forgot how to use it. Talking to yourself! Then die! As Yame went and he tried to strike Goku, but Goku caught his fist and from there Goku looked towards him and said, Do you want to see something? Let me show you a little glimpse of, uh, you could say, 5% of my power. Goku has used his Kaioken as he looked towards Yami and said, Your world is a strange place, but tell me, after seeing me using this, do you think you can beat me? <laughs> I'm here toying with you. How sad. You're embarrassing, Yami. Move aside. I'll finish this man myself. Hell no! As Yami went and he tried to strike Goku, but this time Goku let him hit him, just so he could see that his punch did nothing to him. Goku then reverted right back to his base and said, this is too much power for you to handle. I'll use my base. With that, Goku went and he charged right towards Yame as he kicked him in his face, getting Yame to be sent flying and before he could come down, Goku came right in front of him and he one shot him towards the ground. Everyone was shocked to see that Goku's power, along with Ichigo and I Okiora were surprised to see that he was able to one shot Yame nevertheless. From there, Okiora came and he unleashed a Seto at Goku. Goku saw the Seto come right towards him, so he went and he used his Kaioken to get away from it as he managed to escape it just in the nick of time. And from there, Okio looked towards him and said, What are you? Why is it I cannot sense your power or your present? My name is Goku. I'm a Saiyan from planet Earth. While Goku was taking care of business at Karakura Town, back at Waco Mundo, Aizen was watching everything and he was shocked on seeing Goku and said, what is this? What in the world's going on here? Who is this guy? And why has he interfered with our battle? He's able to one-shot Yami like if he's nothing. And on top of that, he's using that rear red coating power of his, which gave him some sort of boost. Who is he? How interesting. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. Goku has defeated Yami very easily without even breaking a sweat, but he saw that Okiora seems to be the much stronger fighter compared to Yami. Goku has escaped Okiora's Seto, but from there he stared right towards Okiora and said, Wow, you really are strong, huh? How about you tell me who you are? I would ask you the same. Who are you? And what are you doing here? My name is Goku. I'm a Saiyan from planet Earth. Goku? What kind of name is that? And you're from planet Earth? What the heck are you trying to do? Play some games with me? Who are you? My name is Okiora. I'm an Arankar, a loyal servant to Lord Aizen. And my mission here is to collect some research data, but I wouldn't mind killing you in the process. But you unnecessarily got yourself involved in this fight, and now you will die. <laughs> is that so? I really love your confidence, Okiora. Okay then, although I don't know who you are, but my Saiyan blood's kicking in and I cannot wait to see where you stand against me. As Goku got right into this very position. With that, they stared at one another, and next you know, their battle has begun. Okiora went and he began to power up his spiritual pressure, while Goku went and he bent to power up his ki, and from there both of them charged right towards one another as their power clashed with each other and they were going at it back and forth. Okiora went and he tried to strike Goku in his face, but Goku managed to go and dodge it and from there Goku went and kicked Okiora. Okiora went and he used his fist to try to hit Goku back as they kept it up for some time. Both of them continued to hit one another while Ichigo and everyone were very amazed and shocked on seeing this battle 
After all, this is the very first time them witnessing Okira's power, but this is also the very first time everyone witnessing who Goku is. With that, Goku went and he uppercut Okiora as Okiora flew high in the air and from there he quickly went and did a quick speed as he used his flash step and he went right behind Goku and tried to hit him but Goku caught his fist and he twisted it and from there Goku striked him down. Once when Okiora got up, he then wiped the blood off from his face and said, Not bad, your power is really good, but I'm only toying with you, I'm hardly using more power than I am. <laughs> Not bad for yourself too. I was only using hardly 5%. You want to see my 10% of my power? Then let me show you it. 10% huh? You really that cocky you bastard. I'll kill you right here. I'll go and use half my power and end your life. Half? Come on. I was expecting more than half but okay. If that's how you want to do it, allow me to use only 10% of my power. Goku without wasting any time went and he screamed. <laughs> Goku has now gone and transformed into his Super Saiyan 1. After all, Goku is still having some trouble handling his ki and all is the reason why he's not able to use his full power from the start or even use his full base power. But because he's still struggling, he has to use what he has as he decided to go and transform to a Super Saiyan. After all, Okiora isn't some weak pest. He is a very strong around card. With that, everyone was shocked on seeing Goku's new transformation power as they couldn't believe what they saw and from there, Okiora looked towards him and said, Is this some joke? You just changed your hair color from black to yellow. Hmm, <laughs> if you think that's all I did, then how will you come and attack me and then you'll get to see how powerful I am. No one's able to sense Goku's spiritual pressure because he doesn't have one. Goku has key pressure, which no one knows. Okiora on the other hand went and he tried to strike Goku, but Goku just powered up his key pressure, getting Okiora to fly as he landed right next to Goku. He then got up as he was really speechless and from there he stared towards Goku with anger and said, What is this? What have you used? This is my Super Saiyan! You can tell me how strong you think I am now. Do you think you can still beat me with this form? Tch! Like I said, I'm hardly using any power. With that, Okiora went and he powered base Seto and he unleashed it at Goku. Goku stood still as the Seto came right towards him and from there Goku went and he caught it with one hand and he dispersed it. Upon seeing that, everyone was very shocked and speechless since they saw that Goku was able to catch a Seto with his bare hand and crush it like if it was nothing. That got everyone to be really scared. Okiora was about to go and draw his sword but he got orders to return right back to no Las Noches and from there he noticed that Orihime was using her healing power on Ichigo and that she could be a beneficial towards Lord Aizen. And so he picked up Yame and he left right back to Waco Mundo. Upon their arrival, Okura has now come to Waco Mundo while Aizen was waiting for him and from there he looked towards him and said, Okiora, tell me what happened there. My lord. This is weird man, I have never counted before, he calls himself a Saiyan, and his name is Goku. Goku? Hmm, what was that strange power he used? Where did his hair go from black to yellow? Apparently, it is called a Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan you say? He is apparently a Saiyan like I said, and he's able to go super by transforming into that form. Wow. A Saiyan. Maybe he might be the fighter I've been searching for my entire life to fight with. He might even give me a challenge. I shall watch and see what is your purpose here, Goku. Back at Karakura Town, Goku reverted right back to his base as Kisuke Urahara came right towards him and said, Hello, my name is Kisuke Urahara and this is Yorichi. I must say, your power is really amazing to be able to hold your own against those Aran cars. It's like you're hardly toying with them and you were able to easily one shot them. Oh, that? <laughs> well, that's nothing to be honest with you. My power here has been cut in half. 
Or you could say, I still can't tell. It's hard to use my power here in this world. Where am I? Well, you're on Earth. This is called Karakura Town. What? With that, Kisuke decided to go take everyone back to his place, along with Goku, since he's very interested in learning about Goku, who he is, how he came here, but he's not the only one. Everyone else was there very curious on who is Goku and how he was able to be this strong. From there, they all came right back to Kisuke house as they had a big feast and from there Ichigo recovered and he came towards Goku and thanked him and he introduced himself to Goku. Hi, my name is Ichigo Kurosaki. I'm a substitute soul reaper. Hi, nice to meet you Ichigo. My name is Goku. I'm a Saiyan from planet Earth but I must say, watching your battle with those Aronkar you're really strong, but what happened to you? You're holding your own until your body froze up. It is my own holification I'm fighting with. Hall of a... what? I'm confused. Ugh, it's nothing. It's something I'll have to deal with, but... Why are you here? How did you come here? I've never seen you my entire life. Well, I hope not. No one of you guys have seen me. This is actually my very first time ever coming here. I don't know myself where I am or how I came here. All I know is... And from there, Goku began to explain how he has arrived to this world. How he has entered a black hole and that black hole led him to this world. And now he doesn't know how to get back. Upon hearing that, everyone was really confused and amazed to see Goku is a Saiyan nevertheless. He's not a human. He's not a Quincy or Soul Reaper. He's a Saiyan, but he's able to sense power of that of a spiritual pressure. From there, Kisuke had an idea, as he told Goku that he's able to reopen that portal and send Goku back to where he was. But before he does, he needs to do a lot of fixing, although that was a lie. Kisuke's plan is to see, since Goku is so strong, and if Goku stays here, he can help him with their fight with Aizen, and even beat Aizen. Because if Goku beats Aizen, he could bring peace to the Bleach universe. And that's all he wants from Goku, and because of that, he tried to stall as much as he can. Upon hearing that it'll take Kisuke time to fix it and all, and that Goku stuck here for a long time, Goku had no choice but to accept his fate, so he decided to live it to his fullest and said, Okay then, alright. I guess I'll be here for a while, I don't mind it. I'll go back to training. By the way, you guys have a place I could stay? Uh, yeah. You could stay at my house. Uh, I don't think that'll be necessary, Ichigo. He could stay over with me. It's fine, Kisuke. I actually wanted to take him with me. I don't know, there's something about you, Goku. When I'm around you, I feel so positive. It's like you have this positive vibe which makes people want to follow you. <laughs> really? Well, thanks, I guess. And thank you for giving me a place to stay, Ichigo. Goku, would you mind training with me sometime? You're so strong, I'd love to learn from you. Of course. And how about this holification thing you say you're fighting with? How can we fix that? Well, I'll have to go visit some people. Those bastards better tell me how I could do it. Really? Do you know who they are? Yeah, his name is Sinji. He actually told me that he'll help me control my vacation power, but I rejected his offer. Looks like I have to go heads down and ask him to teach me it. I see. Well, then I'll come along with you then. Alright, sounds good. Let's go for his rest. As Ichigo went and took Goku to his home, and from there they were continued to talking all night with one another. Since this is Ichigo's very first time seeing someone, you could say an alien has arrived to his world and that he was able to handle Yami very easily. Ichigo knows the struggle, he uses Bankai and Yami is a strong foe but Goku destroyed him easily without even trying. While all that was happening, back at Wakamundo, Grimja was very impatient on hearing what happened, especially hearing that there's someone stronger than Ichigo and his name is Goku. He had nothing but blood for Goku as he decided to attack Goku when he gets a chance and he's going to leave Wakamundo just so he could fight with Goku. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make.
Everyone has now made plans to meet up again soon so they could discuss further on the war that's going to happen and all. And from there, Goku decided to go and stay at Ichigo's home. As in the canon, Ichigo was feeling very disturbed, kind of depressed and uncomfortable with his power. He had no idea how to control it whatsoever and he wanted to protect his friends and that got him to be very weird and even depressed on how he could do that, but ever since he has met Goku, he felt some type of light around Goku, which allowed his depression not to happen, and therefore he decided to rely everything on Goku and seek his knowledge and help so he could get stronger too. After all, he's not dumb. Everyone has witnessed Goku's Super Saiyan power, and they have seen what Goku has done to Okiyora. Upon seeing what he has done to Okiyora, made all they want to now follow Goku and learn his ways. Once when they arrived to Ichigo's home, Ichigo then showed Goku his room, as both him and Goku will sleep in the same room. Goku will sleep on the floor obviously while Ichigo gets to relax, but from there, Ichigo stared towards Goku and said, So tell me one thing. Huh? Yeah, what's up? About you, you said you're a Saiyan, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, I'm a Saiyan. That's the reason why, when you saw me use that gold hair color form, you can call that my Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan? What is that? Hmm, okay, so it's pretty much like what you did. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard you chant some word when you went into a new form, I think called Bankai? Yeah, my Bankai, what about it? Yeah, pretty much it enchants your power. I could sense that your power has increased tenfold, and because you're able to use the Bankai, that made you become, you could say, a super version of yourself. That's exactly what a Super Saiyan is. It is pretty much me going to my Bankai, you can say, but it gave me a huge boost to my power. About 50 times you can say. Ugh, I'm lost for word, Goku. I still don't have any idea what you're saying, but... Okay, but tell me one thing. Yeah, what's up? How are you able to see us? Like, how are you able to see me in some of my Soul Reaper form? Or even the Aron cars? It doesn't make any sense. You're not a Soul Reaper, you're a Saiyan. I'm glad you asked me that question. From the fight I have seen with you, and you using your spiritual pressure, you call it, I have done some investigation on my own. You could say that I use key, and key, and you could say spiritual pressure, there's a difference. Uh, that's what I'm asking, what's the difference? Key is basically spiritual power that's being used, while spiritual pressure is key that is stored within your soul that's being released. Oh, so spiritual pressure is pretty much all the power that we've powered up in our soul? While key pressure is pretty much all the power you guys release in your key state or something like that? Yeah, like I said, key is basically spiritual power that's being used, while spiritual pressure is key that's stored within your soul. Wow, how are you able to absorb all that, Goku? <laughs> but forget about me, talk about you. What's wrong with you, Ichigo? I noticed that you've been kind of depressed. It's like you are kind of scared to use your full power. That is because I don't have full control of it. I tried, and I'm scared that if I fail, everyone I care for will die. I cannot protect my loved ones. Well, don't worry about that. I don't know how long I'm here, but while I'm here, how about I train you? I could help you control your power, but I'm not sure about this hollow power you're saying. No, there's only one person that can help me with the hollow part. But yeah, I love it if you could train me. That will be great. Alright, sounds good then. We could begin our training whenever you're ready. I'm down for that, Goku. Thank you. As both Goku and Ichigo had a good night's sleep, and they were ready to begin their training the next day. At Wake Up Mundo, Grimja was very angry hearing that someone like Goku, who is this strong, was able to hurt the Arankar and that he was able to beat Okiyora and one-shot Yami. That did not sit in his books, as he decided to go and check it out for himself because he feels that these two has embarrassed the Arankar and he also feels that he's the strongest one so he should go and fight with Goku. After all, Goku did pique his interest. While Aizen, the other hand, has learned everything from Okiora about Goku and said, This guy is surely an interesting subject, Okiora. I should begin more investigation on him. He could be a big role into this. Imagine if I were able to take his power and even fuse it with the Hokyoku and use it towards myself. I will be unstoppable. Do you think that's possible, my lord? Anything is possible, Okiora. I want you to continue to absorb everything you can and tell me what's going on. I'm going to continue to observe this Goku fella. He seems to be a very interesting subject. 
While Aizen was making that plan, Okiyoro was making plans with the rest of the Arankars to follow him to Earth so he could fight with Goku and they could beat Ichigo and everyone else. The next day has happened as Goku and Ichigo were going to his school and from there he was more than motivated to push past his limits and at the same time he was ready to do everything he can to break his fear that he had which got him and Goku to begin their first day of training. Goku and Ichigo went and they began their sparring match as Goku was trying to teach Ichigo how to control his key pressure and not to use this all at once because that's the one fatal mistake he's been using. Ichigo kept getting knocked by Goku and eventually he started to begin to learn slowly on it. While they're busy training, Ichigo then saw that the rest of the Soul Reaper has arrived as Captain Hisugaya, Rukia, Renji, all of them has arrived to go and check on, on Ichigo and they also came because they were hearing about the Arankar coming to the world of the living and they want to see what's going on. This is the first time they have all met Goku as they're all very shocked on seeing who Goku is and they couldn't believe that someone like Goku exists. From there, Kisuke explained everything about who Goku is and all, and that he also told him that Goku is a Saiyan. That part was really weird on all the Soul Reapers since this is their very first time hearing about who Goku is. They all began to have their doubts on Goku and not believe the fact that Goku was as strong as Kisuke has said to be. And with that, it has become nighttime, as Grimjow and the other Arankars have now arrived to the world of the living. Alright guys, our plan is to go and kill. Ichigo Kurosaki, and even that Goku person that Okiora fought. But that Goku person is mine. I want to be the one to kill him. <laughs> Whatever. Do what you want. <laughs> Let's begin the search. With that, the rest of the Soul Reaper were able to sense the Arankar's power as they all scattered and they went into their fighting position, getting ready to fight with the Arankar. Ichigo sensed a huge spiritual pressure coming towards his way, and that was no one other than Grimjow. Grimjaw was able to find Ichigo and said, So, here you are. I take it you're Ichigo Kurosaki, huh? How the hell you know me? Let me guess, you're in a wrong car. That is right. Tch, then I'll fight you here myself. Bonkai! With that, Ichigo has now used his Bankai as he entered the battlefield and he charged right towards Grimjow and their power clash with each other. Goku on the other hand has now come out of Kisuke's home. Since he took a nap, he fell asleep but he was able to sense all the power that was clashing on the world of the living. And when he came, Goku saw everything and said, Whoa, there's so many of them fighting. Let's see, which one needs my help? Goku could see that Rukia and Ichigo were both in the middle of the fight with Grimjow as he also noticed that Rangiku was busy trying to fight her and she was kinda losing so Goku decided to go interfere the fight as he went and he one-shotted the Aranka that Rangiku was fighting. Upon seeing that got her to be very surprised as she couldn't believe that her Goku strength was this strong. With that Goku has instant transmission to right where Ichigo and Grimjaw were fighting as Grimjaw went and he charged towards Ichigo and striked him in his stomach. Ichigo went and he was about to try to use his hollow form but it started to take over him as he began to slowly lose it and from there Grimjaw went and started to kick his ass. Grimjaw then went to power up a settle to kill Ichigo but from there he saw Goku has arrived as Goku kicked him in his face. Grimjaw fell towards the ground when he got up he saw Goku stare towards him and said who are you and why are you guys here? Well well, I take it you're the one who fought Okiura. Huh, this will be a pretty good fight then. I'm here to kill you myself. Is that so? Well then, how about you come show me what you got then? With that Renji, Rukia and Ibirongiko since they're free were busy watching the fight with Goku and Grimjow. Grimjow went and charged right towards Goku as he tried to strike him but Goku dodged it and with that Goku went and kneed him right in his stomach getting Grimjow to gasp for air. Goku then went and uppercut him getting him to be sent flying high in the air. Grimjow then managed to do a backflip as he began to laugh and say, <laughs> You're not bad! Your power is actually pretty strong! Too bad I cannot say the same about you Grimjow. Your power is actually pretty weak. Ha! <laughs> really? How about I put an end towards this right now? Goku went and he began to use his Kaioken, the same move he used to one-shot Yami. With that, he instantly came right in front of Grimjow as he went and he punched him but Grimjow released his sword, getting Goku to punch his sword and he managed to break it. 
Grinja fell with the pressure of Goku's punch towards the ground, and from there he got really angry as he charged right up in the air and said, Alright then, it's time I use my full power. I'm gonna kill you right here. Grimja went and powered up a massive settle to aim it towards Goku, but Goku went and he powered up a Kamehameha wave as he aimed it right towards Grimja. Upon seeing Goku use his Kamehameha wave got everyone to be very shocked. This was their very first time ever seeing Goku unleash a power wave. All of them were very confused saying what is that? Is it a settle? Is it a, some type of Bankai move that Goku used? Because it is very similar to Ichigo's Getsuga Tensho or is very similar to the Arankar Seto, but it's not one of those two. Goku is a Saiyan. Upon unleashing his Kamehameha wave, Grimjaw tried to block it with his arm, but the wave went and destroyed his entire arm as he had a huge scar in his chest. Grimjaw was close to dying as he couldn't believe that Goku's power was this strong. And before he could make the next move, everyone was transferred back to Waco Mundo since they came here without Aizen's permission. When Goku saw them leave, Goku looked towards Ichigo and said, I guess this is the one who tried to kill you here, huh? How the hell did you do that, Goku? How'd you unleash that wave? Oh, it's called my Kamehameha wave. It's also another technique I could use thanks to having key pressure. I pretty much power up all my key in one area and I unleash it. God damn, Goku. He almost killed him. How strong are you? <laughs> you have no idea, Ichigo. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. Goku has now made a show as he managed to unleash a Kamehameha wave for the very first time in front of everybody. Ichigo and everyone were very confused on what Goku did, but when Goku explained what it was, they couldn't believe just how powerful he was. And the best part is, Goku didn't even use his Super Saiyan like he did against Okiora. He only used his Kaioken. With that, the news spread out to all the Arankars and every, all the Soul Reapers and everywhere that a Saiyan from the world of the living who's not a Soul Reaper is able to see them and he easily destroyed the Arankars. Upon hearing that got all the Soul Reapers to be very shocked, especially the headmaster Yamamoto. And when it comes to Arankars, Aizen was really upset with Grimjow as he couldn't believe that Grimjow went without his order to go to planet Earth and fight with Goku but he was also impressed on seeing Goku's power. After learning the Kamehameha wave, it was a run research material that helped him in his case as he's continued to investigate on Goku. And from there, he teach Grimjaw a lesson as Grimjaw has permanently lost his right arm. With that, Grimjaw was very upset but he had no choice. If he were to do anything, he knows Aizen would kill him. While Aizen continued to go and spy on Goku to see what kind of person he is. Goku then looked towards Ichigo and said, Hey, what's wrong man? Again. I was fighting and my inner hall of vacation took over and allowed him that bastard to attack me. Why don't you go and learn how to unleash it? Didn't you say someone can help you? Yeah, that bastard Sinji. I'm gonna force him to help me. Okay, then I'll go with you. I wanna also see how you're able to release that hall of vacation mode and if you're able to use it, we can have another sparring match. I'll train you even more. <laughs> Sounds good to me, Goku. Let's go the next day. It's right now night. Let's call it a day. As everyone went run back to their house, but at the same time, they were all amazed and shocked with Goku's power. And the news went out to the, all the Soul Society to watch out for Goku. His power is something they cannot underestimate. As for the Arankars, Goku's name has been passed around, as they couldn't believe that there was a mortal who was not even a Soul Reaper or even a Arankar, but he's able to make trouble. They believe he's just a human since they have no idea, but some of them learned that he's not a human, he's a Saiyan, and he's able to easily destroy them. If they want to win, they're going to have to work as a team to attack Goku. Next day has break as Goku went with Ichigo to Sinji's place and from there Ichigo confronted Sinji. Sinji looked towards Ichigo and said, Ah, so you finally came Ichigo. What would you like to do from me? I'm here to use you Sinji. Teach me how to control my holification. And who might that be? That's my friend Goku. Goku. So your name has been passed around throughout the entire Soul Society. I see I'm well known, huh? Not just that. Everyone knows that your power is so strong, you're able to almost beat those around cards. So tell me something, 
If you have someone as strong as Goku with your side, Ichigo, why do you want to learn holification? Just let Goku handle everything. Because that's not his job! He's nice enough to help me, but it's my job to protect Karakuro Town! Now teach me, Senji! Senji was in no mood to fight with Ichigo, especially after hearing that Goku is like his bodyguard and like his right hand man. Anywhere Ichigo goes, Goku's follow him. So if they want to fight with Ichigo, they know they're gonna have to fight with Goku. Senji has agreed to help Ichigo since he saw that Goku was there, and with that, they took Ichigo to the training ground. Goku followed as they went there, and with that, they begun helping Ichigo master his Soul Reaper power so he could master his holification. It took some time, it wasn't easy, while Goku continued to sit there and eat all the food, all of them were very amazed with just how pure hearted Goku is and what kind of person he is, all he likes to do is eat and that he loves to train too as Goku continued to meditate and do his own training while waiting on Ichigo. From there Ichigo has finally managed to master his holification power, as he was able to now transform to his holo form anytime he likes at will. Goku really liked that as Goku got up and said, well Ichigo. If you're now ready, how about you fight me? Let's see where you stand a chance against me then. Huh. <laughs> Alright then. I guess this will be a good way to spar with you, Goku. Yeah, and once I get to see how powerful you are, I could train you accordingly to that. Alright, bet. Let's do it. As Goku and Ichigo went to their ready position and with that their battle begun. Ichigo went and he used his Bankai as he transformed and rushed right towards Goku and with that he tried to strike him. Goku managed to go and dodge it as Goku went and kicked Ichigo in his face. Ichigo got sent flying but he did a backflip as he charged towards Goku and from there he continued to hit him. With that Goku was holding his own as he was impressed to see how Ichigo was handling his own against Goku and from there Goku smiled and said, Not bad Ichigo, now how about you go and use your qualification, let's see where that stand against me. Heh, <laughs> are you ready then? Let me show you my qualification. Alright then, this is my hollow form Goku. I hope you're ready to lose now. <laughs> Alright then, bring it. Ichigo went and charged right towards Goku as he used his sword to slash him. Goku got hit getting sent flying. Goku was very impressed as he couldn't believe on top of his Bankai his hollow form was this strong. Goku smiled and said, Alright Ichigo, I like it. As Goku went and he used his Kaioken, and from there Ichigo went again as he charged towards Goku and he unleashed another wave, getting Goku to get sent flying. Goku saw that Ichigo's power far exceeded his Kaioken, and that if he wants to hold his own, he needs to use his Super Saiyan, and with that Goku went and he screamed. <laughs> Goku has now transformed to his Super Saiyan as he looked towards Ichigo and said, Not bad Ichigo, damn, your power is really strong. Okay then, let's see how you hold your own against me inside my Super Saiyan. Ha, ah, using your Super Saiyan I see. Alright then, I won't back down. Let's go Goku. As their second round begun, with that Ichigo charged towards Goku while Goku did the same and both the power clashed with one another and they were going at it back and forth. With each landing blow the entire area was shaking as Sinji couldn't believe what he was witnessing that Ichigo's power was this strong but they were also witnessing Goku's super saiyan power up close. From there Goku went and kicked Ichigo in his face while Ichigo went and he slashed Goku in his sword and from there he went and powered up a Getsuga Tensho, aiming it towards Goku. Goku went and he powered up a Kamehameha wave, he aimed it towards Ichigo's Getsuga Tensho as their wave clashed with each other and from there Goku won the wave battle. Ichigo got sent flying towards the ground and from there he lost his holification since he's not able to use it for much longer. Goku looked towards him and said, it's time we begin the training Ichigo, I could see your weakness and I'm gonna make sure you're able to use that form far longer than, than normal so let's do it. Alright Goku, I'm up for it. As their training has begun and as you know it, few days has passed since Goku and Ichigo were training with each other. They were using Sinji's training ground while everyone made a decision to participate in the war and do everything they can to fight. 
or Hime was excluded from the war by Kisuke as she managed to find where Ichigo was and she told Ichigo and Goku about the war. Goku and Ichigo heard about it and they were very interested as Goku was really excited to fight more stronger people than the wrong cards and he was ready for the war to happen. Since they did explain to Goku about Aizen and everything, Goku is well aware about the situation that's happening right now at the Soul Society. While they continued to train, it was time for Grimjaw to get his revenge. Without Aizen knowing, Grimjaw went and he got a few of other wrong cards, but Aizen this time told Grimjaw that he could go to the world of the living and have a rematch with Goku and Ichigo. Aizen only did that because his plan was to continue spying on Goku and they wanted to go and kidnap Orihime. With that, they went with their plan. While Orihime left with Rukia to the Soul Society so they could train each other, Goku and Ichigo continued to train, but now they were able to sense Aronkar entering to the world of the living. From there, Goku stopped this battle and said, Ichigo, you sense that? Oh, it's that bastard Grimjow! Let's go, Goku! Relax, I know exactly what you could do. Besides, it's time for you to show them your new training. I cannot wait to see how powerful you are now this time. Yeah, thanks to you. As Goku took Ichigo by his shoulder, and he has into transmission right in front of Grimjow. Grimjow, on the other hand, has now went and begun searching for Goku and Ichigo, and in front of them they have appeared. As Ichigo looked towards him and said, I see you found us, Grimjow. More like we found him. <laughs> yeah, that. Ah, so there you guys are. Alright, which one of you bastards want to fight me first? That'll be me. Goku, step aside. Are you sure, Ichigo? Oh, I got this. Bunkai! As Ichigo went and he began to power up his Bankai. It is time you die right here, Grimjow. Ha! <laughs> Bring it on! With that, their battle has begun. Grimjow went and charged towards Ichigo while Ichigo did the same and their both power clashed at each other, but this time Ichigo was able to overpower him. Compared to the cannon, Ichigo did not get any training done from Goku. And because he was able to get this training done with Goku, it has made his base power far stronger than it was in the cannon, where here he is now able to hold its own against Grimjow and just his Bankai. From there, Ichigo began to go and attack him as he looked towards Grimjow and said, What's the matter, Grimjow? Your power sure is weak. Huh. Don't test me, you bastard! Alright, how about I show you a power where I'll only toy with you? Mahalo! Ichigo has now gone and used his holification mode. Grimjaw was very shocked as he couldn't believe the power that Ichigo was using and with that, Ichigo went and charged right towards him as he instantly came in front of Grimjaw and he began to kick his ass. Goku could sense that Yami came to the world of the living as he instant transmission there and he saw that Yami and Kisuke were going at it. Out of nowhere, Goku went and he stepped Yami right in his back, getting to fall right towards the ground. <laughs> I was able to one shot him before and the same thing happened now. It's good to see the slug didn't change at all. Ah, oh, Goku, where did you come from? Oh, I'm busy helping Ichigo anyways, I just wanted to kick his ass. I'll see you guys in a bit. Goku has instant transmission back to Ichigo's fight as Ichigo was toying with Grimjow while Grimjow was bleeding and he couldn't believe that Ichigo's power was this strong. From there, Grimjow was ready to go and use his unleashed form but he saw Ichigo's hollow max crack as he saw that this was opportunity and from there Goku saw that Ichigo has overused all his power after all he was supposed to conserve his energy he hasn't fully mastered holification yet and because of that he wasn't able to fully use it for a longer time Grimjaw was about to go and kick Ichigo's ass but Goku instantly came right in front of him as he decked him in his face sorry but your battle is not with me <laughs> you bastard I still gotta get my revenge on what you did right here <laughs> I could see you don't have an arm no more. How sad. If you want to save your other arm, I suggest you leave. Otherwise, I will destroy it. Is that so? Okay, then let's see what you got. Grimjaw went and charged right towards Goku as Goku did the same. And with that, their power clashed. Goku this time, instead of wasting time, he went and he used his Super Saiyan. As he instantly transformed into that, and with that, Grimjaw was extremely shocked as he couldn't believe what he saw. Goku went and kicked him in his face, getting Grimjaw to bleed from his mouth, and from there, Goku went and punched him as he got sent flying towards the ground. Grimjaw then saw Goku stare towards him and said, You are so weak. Come on, are all your round cards this weak? How about you guys train next time? Maybe then you might have a chance to fight me. 
Before Goku can unleash a blast, Aizen has called all the Aran cards to come back as they have all disappeared. Wow, they ran away again. Back at Waco Mundo, Aizen saw all the Aran cards and said, This is the third time he kicked your guy's ass. I think it's time you guys all train and get yourself to be stronger if you ever want to have a chance to beat him. Otherwise, his power level seems to be something that will be worthy of mine. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. Goku and Ichigo has now beaten Grimja, but Ichigo still wants to train to get stronger with Goku as they all came back to relax and rest and while they're busy resting, little did they knew Orihime was coming back to the world of the living but right there, Okiora has infiltrated the precipice as he managed to go and kidnap Orihime. The plan from the beginning was to take Orihime as hostage so that they could all go to Wakamundo while Aizen comes to the world of the living and continues on with his plan by trying to erase the Soul King. Orihime had one day to say goodbye to everyone and she chose to say goodbye to Ichigo as she said her farewell and left and when Ichigo woke up he realized that his wound was healed because of Orihime and Goku noticed something was weird and from there Ichigo began to have a weird sense of feeling until the headmaster of the Soul Society called all his Soul Reapers to come back including Renji and Rukia. The headmaster kinda labeled Orihime as a traitor and because of that he told all his Soul Reapers to come back so they could prepare for the war for when Aizen attacks but they had no idea that Orihime was kidnapped. Ichigo would not believe that so he decided to do everything he can to go and save Orihime from Aizen's wrath. As he made a vow to himself he'll do everything he could to bring her back and from there he decided to go to Wake Mundo alone. Ichigo then made his way towards Urahada's shop as he was about to ask him to open a gate to the Wake Mundo but from there he saw Goku was there along with Chad and Uryu. From there Goku looks towards Ichigo and said, Hey Ichigo, where do you think you're going? I'm gonna go save Orihime. There's no way I'm gonna let those bastards kidnap her. Well, you know my answer. I'm down with wherever you go. I'm gonna come with you too. Really? You wanna help me too on this? Of course! I have nothing else to do anyways. I'm kinda stuck here in your world. Might as well use the time to go fight some strong Aran cars. You saw what I did to them. I can't wait to see how powerful they are too. You know it's gonna be very dangerous. That's the same thing I'll tell you too, Ichigo. You know it's gonna be very dangerous. So why are you thinking of going alone? Horahima is my friend. I want to protect her. I respect that. And you know me, I'm a Saiyan. I cannot say no to big battles. It's make my blood boil just to go and fight. I cannot wait. Well, that's the reason why I'm going to go with you. Let's do this. All right, bet. As they all enter the portal and now they're making their way to worse. Waco Mundo and next you know, they have now arrived to Waco Mundo. Upon arriving there, they then began to see the desert was looking very weird. It didn't feel right, this kind of felt off. And from there, Ichigo began to go and see that the castle is all the way down there. Although it looked like a, you could say, few minutes walk, it ain't. It was a long ride, but thanks to Goku's instant transmission, he told everybody to hold on. And from there, Goku has now instant transmission everybody to the castle. Once when they got to the castle of Wakamundo, from there, Ichigo looked towards everyone and said, Well, this is it. Our plan is to get Orihime. I have an idea. If any of you guys find Orihime, just power up your spiritual pressure. I'll instantly come to you guys. And with that, we could get her and we'll get her to come back home. Alright, sounds like a plan. So then, did we split from here? Yes. And if you see Grimjo, don't worry. I'm well prepared for him. After all, we did have a few days before I came here. I did nothing but train. I know you did, and I know you're ready. Good luck with your fight. And if you encounter with Okiora, try not to take him head on. I'll handle that bastard. Are you sure? Oh, trust me. He's pretty strong, but not as strong compared to me. As they all shook each other's hand, and now they began to go their separate ways, trying to do everything they can to find out where Orihime is. Goku did bump into a few Aron cars that were on the way, or you could say a few Espadas, not Aron cars and he was easily able to one-shot them with just his base power as none of them stood a chance against him. 
Ichigo, on the other hand, continued to run to look for where Orihime is, but unfortunately for Ichigo, he has bumped into Okiyora. As Okiyora looked towards him and said, Where do you think you're going? I don't got time to waste on you. I'm here to bring my friend back. Ah, you're here to search for Orihime. Yeah, what about her? What if I tell you I'm the one who kidnapped Orihime? <sighs> I should have knew Orihime didn't come here with their own free will. You bastard! That is right. What are you going to do about it? I'll show you with my Bunkai! As Ichigo has now used his hollow form with his Bankai, and with that he has unleashed a massive Getsuga Tensho. Upon releasing that Getsuga Tensho, it went and hit Okiyora, but he went and caught it with one hand, and he managed to get it dispersed. Ichigo was shocked to see that, but upon using his Getsuga Tensho, Goku was busy making his way towards where the rest of the spotter was until he sensed that, and from there he said, Whoa, okay, I see Ichigo's fighting. That's Okiyora! Hold on, Ichigo. Whoa! What the heck's going on here? Ah, so you brought along Goku. I've been waiting for him. Yeah, I'm here. And I see you've been trying to go behind my back to fight Ichigo. I told you I'm gonna fight you, Okiyora. Watch out, Goku! His power is far stronger than before! That is right. My power is far stronger. Don't worry. Leave him to me, Ichigo. You go on ahead. Alright, thanks, Goku. As Ichigo began to go and search for where Orihime is, but then from there, Ichigo has bumped into no one other than Grimjow. Grimjow looked towards Ichigo and said, Where the hell do you think you're going? Get out of my way. I don't got time to waste on you. Ha! <laughs> you have no time at all. You're in Las Noches. Over here, you're gonna die. Is that so? Hey, how about I show you something? As he went and he snapped his finger and saw Orihime was in chain and she was in his custody. Upon seeing that got Ichigo really angry as Ichigo went and from there he used his Bankai. Okay then, you bastard, I'm gonna kill you right here. <laughs> Bring it on then! As Ichigo and Grimjaw stared towards one another, and now their battle has begun. Grimjaw went and charged right towards Ichigo, while Ichigo did the same and their power clashed with each other as they continued to go head to head back and forth. With each landing blow, the entire Lost Mochis was shaking, but it did not affect anyone. Aizen made it so if any battle happens, it will not tremble around the entire place. Goku is able to sense every battle that's going on, but Ichigo is busy attacking Grimjaw. Grimjaw went and tried to kick Ichigo, but he dodged it as Ichigo went and he uppercut Grimjaw, getting to be sent flying high in the air, and Ichigo instantly came right behind him and he slashed him with his sword, getting Grimjaw to fall towards the ground. Grimjaw then got up and said, Yes, looks like you got a lot stronger, Soul Reaper. I'm looking forward to having an interesting battle with you. Please, you're right, I did get a lot stronger, but you won't come close to me. As Ichigo went and he powered up a Getsuga Tensho and he aimed it right towards Grimjow. Grimjow managed to go and release his sword as he managed to dodge the attack and from there he began to break a lot of sweat. Breathing heavily, it wasn't easy to dodge that. He then looked towards Ichigo and said, You bastard. You wanna fight? Okay then. How about I use my full power? I've been waiting that for the day one. Show me what you got! Alright, it's time I use my release form! as Grimja went and he used his released form. This is my true power, Soul Reaper. What do you think about it? My god, his power is crazy. That is right, and I'm gonna make sure I end your life right here. Now. Show me what you got! Use your pathetic hollow form! Alright then, if that's what you want, then that's exactly what you're gonna get! As Ichigo went and he used his hollow form.
Alright, Giram Chow. This is the form you wanted to see, right? Here's my holification. Those eyes. I hate those eyes. You can hate whatever you want. And I hate you too. I'm gonna end you. As their final battle has commenced. From there, Ichigo went and charged right towards Grimjow. While Grimjow did the same, and their both power clashed with each other, and they continued to hit each other one in one, doing everything they can to overpower one another. Their main goal was trying to kill each other. As Grimjow went and he aimed a settle towards Ichigo, but Ichigo dodged it, and with that, he went and aimed at Getsugo at Tensho, hitting Grimjow. Grimjow did not like the fact that Ichigo was able to do that to him, and with that, he charged right towards him and he tried to do everything he can to hit him. Orihime was very scared seeing that battle, but this isn't the same Ichigo. Ichigo did train with Goku, and now his Hall of Power is far stronger than what it was in the original, and therefore he's able to easily hold his own against Grimjow. Ichigo then went and used his sword to slash Grimjow, getting to be sent flying, and from there Grimjow went, and he unleashed his sword and he tried to hit Ichigo, but Ichigo dodged it, and from there he went and punched him and said, Not bad, your power did increase, but it still wanna come close to me. If I are you, I'll give up right here, Grimjow. You wish, Soul Reaper. I'll never give up. As all the other Espadas were watching the battle, intense battle of Ichigo versus Grimjow. While they're busy battling out, this was Aizen's cue. Aizen has already left to the world of the living, trying to carry out his plan as the war has now begun. But from there, all the Soul Reapers were already waiting for Aizen at the world of the living. Back to Ichigo and Grimjow's fight. Grimjow went and he looked towards him and said, Alright Soul Reaper, how about we put this final battle to an end? Let's use our strongest trump card and end each other. Fine by my me. Don't blame me when I kill you. As both of them went and they powered up the strongest attack. Ichigo powered up the Getsugo Tensho while Grimjaw went and powered up a Seto and they aimed it towards each other and now both their wave has clashed with each other. They are trying to do everything they can to overpower one another and thanks to Ichigo training with Goku, Goku was able to teach Ichigo the move. He did try to do everything he can to help him but Ichigo was not able to understand the move and that was nothing but the Kaioken. Upon teaching Ichigo the Kaioken, Ichigo then saw that this was his opportunity to try to use it as he decided to go and use his Kaioken. Alright then, how about I end this with my Kaioken? This is my Kaioken, Grimjow. Are you ready to lose now? If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. Alright Ichigo, now I'm gonna teach you one technique that I have been using the whole time. You mean that red thing that you always use? Correct, it is called the Kaioken. Because you have spiritual energy, it's gonna be a little difficult teaching you that, but it's actually not that hard. I want you to focus that spiritual energy and to continue meditating and try to bring it out. There's a, some type of part of that energy that you get to feel. It's kind of negative, but not really. I'm going to need you to focus on that. Uh, okay. As Ichigo spent days trying to figure that out, and from there he said, I'm able to finally feel it. Very good. Now, all you got to do is use that energy to surround your entire body, and it'll create like a red type of glow. That is called the Kaioken. Alright, let me try it. Kayo Ken! There you go, Ichigo, you did it! Very good! <laughs> wow! This feels amazing! Oh! As Ichigo lost his Kaioken and he passed out. Once when he woke up, Goku looked towards him and said, Yeah, I kind of figured this would happen. Your spiritual energy clashed with it, and therefore, it, it, you weren't really able to control it. So what are you saying? I cannot you ever use it? It's really up to you, Ichigo. Once you feel like you're 100% ready, then you can. We come back to the current time, where Ichigo has now fought with Grimjow, and he used his Kaioken. With that, Grimjow was very scared, as Ichigo said, It is time I put an end to this. Now, now die! die. Get to go! 
POTENTIAL! As a blast went and it hit Grimja with the power of Kaioken and Grimja wasn't able to overpower that as he got hit head on and he fell right towards the ground close to being dead as it was absorbing his life for it and now he was dying. Ichigo has finally did it as he put an end towards Grimja's life and now he had Orihime in his custody telling her that everything's gonna be okay. Back to Goku and Okiura's battle. Goku stared towards Okiura as he had a smirk and said, Good job Ichigo, you did it. What are you smiling about? You do know this is a place where you'll die. Heh, <laughs> I was just actually checking out the battle with Ichigo. He managed to defeat Grimjow. I see, so you're able to sense that power from far away. Not even I was able to check that out. What the hell are you? I'm a Saiyan, now tell me. Are you gonna let me go through, or are you gonna be persistent to fight me? You do know if you fight me, you're gonna die right here, Okiora. I wouldn't be so sure. Thanks to you, you opened my eyes. Not just mine, but everyone else's. Lord Aizen made sure we all make sure we watch who you are, and he told us to train. I have done nothing but train for the past week, trying to make sure my power far exceeds yours. Oh, ho, ho. so you finally train, huh? I'm surprised, I never thought you and Ronkars are able to train. Okay then, let me see how powerful you are. I'm ready to see what you got. As Goku got into his ready position, and with that, Ukiora stared towards him, as their battle has now begun. Goku went and he charged right towards Okiora as he striked him in his face, getting Okiora to send flying, but he was able to catch Goku's fist, but the pressure of that fist did get him to be sent flying, as he instantly came right next to Goku and he kicked him in his face, getting Goku to fall towards the ground. Goku was amazed to see that Okiora wasn't bluffing and that his power has actually increased a lot since he did manage to go and train. From there, Goku went and he charged again towards Okiora while Okiora did the same and their power clashed with each other as they were going at it back and forth. With each landing blow, both of them were doing everything they can to overpower one another. The objective here was not to survive, it was to kill. Orihime was kidnapped, Goku wants to kill Okiora cause he knows if he's alive he'll continue to come to hurt Ichigo and everyone else, while Okiora wants to please Lord Aizen and he'll do everything he can to kill Goku. Okiora then went and he unleashed a settle on Goku, while Goku instantly went and powered up becoming a Mihel wave and aided him towards Okiora's settle, as their wave had a battle clash with one another and they both got dispersed. Ha! <laughs> I must admit, your power really has gotten a lot stronger, Okiora. You're definitely not bluffing. I'm actually amazed is this strong. Like I said, don't be so cocky. You won't stand a chance against me now. My power far exceeds yours. As Okiora came right in front of Goku, and with that he striked him in his face as he kicked him in his back. Goku knows that Okiora's speed had just randomly increased. Turns out he was only toying with Goku as he managed to increase his speed and with that he continued to attack him. Goku then managed to separate himself from Okiora, but Okiora wouldn't do that. He went and unleashed a settle close up to Goku's face. Goku managed to instant transmission away as if he didn't it could have hit him and he would have dealt with the damage that he has never dealt with before. Goku then looked towards him and said, Phew, that was a close one. Alright then, you really want to fight? Then let me go to my Super Saiyan. As Goku went and he screamed. Goku has now transformed into his Super Saiyan, as Okiora looked towards and said, That is the form I've been waiting for. This is the form that defeated me last time. Let's see if it attaches me now. Alright then, have it your way. As they stared towards one another, and now their second round has begun. Okiora went and charged towards Goku while Goku did the same, and with that, again, both of their power clashed with each other as they were going at him. While Goku was busy fighting with Okiora, some of the captain of the 13 court guard squad like Byakuya Kuchki has entered Las Noches as he was battling with one of the Aspada that was there. And from there, Kampachi Zaraki has also arrived and Kurosuchi has also arrived as they went to help out Rukia and Chad and everyone else that needed their help since their job was set from the head captain to go help everyone out while they go and attack Aizen. Back on Karakuru town, Aizen was there as his battle has begun with all the headmasters and the captain of the soul society and they did everything they can to hold their own against him like in the canon. 
Goku and Okira's battle continue to intensify as they strike each other and with that they manage to take it outside as both Okira and Goku continue to hit one another. Okira then looked towards him and said, You do know I have a power far stronger than this. I'm glad that I was able to train. All you do is talk. If you have that power then show me Okira. I'm here to see what you got. Alright then follow me. As Okira flew high in the air and with that he managed to break the sky entering to a different realm. Goku followed by instant transmission there and once when he got there, he saw everything was pitch dark and said, Whoa! Downstairs was like all sunny and bright and here it's like all gloomy and dark. Alright then, you wanna fight me here? Then let's do it. This will be your deathbed. No, this will be your deathbed, Saiyan. You gotta know something. I was a spotter number four, but after training, Aizen made me number one. Really? So your power has increased that much? Then let me see what you got. Alright then have it your way. Release. As Okiar went and he released his full power. <laughs> this is my true power. You can call it my release form. Whoa. He wasn't bluffing! His power is actually incredible! Now die! Before Goku can even blink, Okira has come right behind him as he unleashed a Seto and his speed was so fast that Goku couldn't keep up. The Seto hit him head on. Once when Goku got hit, he thought that was it but no. Okira hit him with the Seto and he instantly came again right in front of him and he slashed him with his two wings as Goku's entire gi continued to torn up and with that Okira went and he began to beat the shit out of Goku. Despite the fact that Goku was using his Super Saiyan power, Okiora's new resurrection form was far stronger than Goku's Super Saiyan since he did train and try to make sure he'd become stronger than Goku. After his first encounter with Goku, he did not want to take that again and have a loss so he made sure it would be the opposite result. Goku then went back up as he was breathing heavily and said, Damn, your power is really good. Here I thought that you guys cannot get any stronger than that. <laughs> Like I said, you're just a feeble human. I'm not a human, I'm a Saiyan. Whatever. You guys don't come close to us Arankars. Our power far exceeds anything. Is that so? What if I tell you that I have been actually holding back a lot on you too? Hmm? No way. I don't buy that shit. <laughs> buy it or not, it's your wish. But actually, I've been holding back. What you're seeing now is just my Super Saiyan power. I have something far stronger than this. Yeah. That's what they all say when you don't want to die. Alright then let me show you. As Goku went and he screamed. <laughs> Goku has now gone and transformed into his Super Saiyan 2. This is Goku's first time using this power in the Bleach universe as he was amazed that Okiora's power has far exceeded what he thought and said, you should call yourself lucky Okiora and you should also be proud of yourself. No one in your guys universe made me go this far in battle before but you did. So congratulations. What is this? What kind of power are you using? You can call this Super Saiyan 2. Now, are you ready to show me how strong you are? Super Saiyan 2? What the hell are you? I told you before, I'm a Saiyan and I have more transformation than this. As they stare towards one another and with that, their final round has begun. Goku went and charged right towards Okiora while he did the same and their power clashed with each other as they were going at it back and forth, landing blow to blow towards one another. They were doing everything they can to overpower each other, but Goku at his Super Saiyan 2 power far exceeded what Okira could ever think of. Yes, he has trained and made himself stronger, but Super Saiyan 2 Goku was far stronger than that, as Goku went and striked him in his face, getting Okotriyo to be sent flying and from there he instantly came right behind him and he kneed him in his back. Okira then went and he took out a scythe as he tried to hit Goku with that, but Goku caught that scythe with one hand and he broke it. You're too weak, Okiora. Your power doesn't come close to me, especially the fact that I'm using this form. If you wanted to kill me, you should have done it before, but you lost. Goku went and kicked him in his face, getting to be sent flying. 
as he couldn't believe that Goku's power was this strong. With that, Goku instantly came right next to him as he began to beat the shit out of Okiyora, and from there he powered up a massive Kamehameha wave and said, Now it's time I kill you right here, Okiyora. Say goodbye. Goku aimed the wave towards him as Okiyora tried to hold it off but he couldn't and with that, the wave hit him head on as he fell right towards the ground. With that, Okiyora was surprised to see that he hasn't died and that he's still breathing as Goku came and stared right towards him and said, I decided to show you mercy. Why are you bowing down towards Aizen? He's the one who made me this strong. Well, now I made you this strong. I spared your life so you owe me. Do you want me to kill you here? No. Well then, join me. I want you for now on to protect Karakura Town with everything you got. You're now going to be protecting Ichigo too. You're going to be part of the Soul Reaper fight. I see. Well, I don't want to die. So I guess I'll accept that offer. But Lord Aizen will kill me regardless, so I don't care. I'll accept your mercy until Aizen kills one of us. Ha! Huh. Leave Aizen to me. I'll end his life myself. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. Goku has now finished beating Okiyora as Okiyora has agreed to join the Bleach Force you could call it since they don't really have a name for it but he agreed to be part of the Soul Society and help Ichigo in his quest since Goku gave him a no option it was either help or die. With that Goku and Okiyora returned right back to the Lost Noches as they saw that Kenpachi, one of the captain of the 13 Court Guard squad along with Byakuya was busy fighting with Yami. Yami was there doing everything he can to attack them as he did not like them one bit and from there when Yami saw Okiyora come, he was confused on why Okiyora is on Goku's side and said, Hey, Okiyora! What the hell is going on? Why are you on his side? Quiet, you fool. If are you, step aside. Otherwise you will die here. Ha! Looks like you became a traitor! I'll gladly kill- Before he could say another word, Goku went and he one shot him as he was inside his super saiyan and he managed to pierce right through Yami and from there he powered up a massive angry Kamehameha wave and aimed it at him. Yami tried to hold up but the wave hit him head on and he died right there. Kunpachi didn't like that Goku has intervened with his fight and said, Hey, who the hell you think you are? That was my fight. Huh? Oh, my bad. He kind of asked for it. He was just, you know, asking for it. I don't give a shit if he was asking for it or not. You're not supposed to interfere a fight, especially of a captain from a court guard squad. I'm gonna enjoy killing you here. Whoa, he doesn't have to go through that. You want to kill me just for that? Yes, I do. If anything, I heard that you're pretty strong too. I have a little grudge to fight you to see where you stand against me. Huh, if it's a fight you wanted, then you should have told that from the start. Show me what you got. As Goku went and transformed to his Super Saiyan and he got to his ready position. With that, his and Kenpachi's battle has begun. Kenpachi went and he charged right towards Goku, while Goku did the same and both their power clashed with one another as they were going at it back and forth. With each landing blow, everyone was seeing that the entire Lost Notions was shaking but Goku wasn't holding any punches back along with Kenpachi. As Kenpachi went and he tried to do everything he can to overpower Goku. But Goku went and dodged all of his attack and said, Your problem is you're too slow. And if I won, I could easily one shot you. Huh, <laughs> is that so? Well then, why don't you show me if that's the case? Alright then, let me show you. Goku, without wasting time, went and he transformed to his Super Saiyan 2 as he instantly came right in front of Kampachi. And with that, he went and one shot him to the ground. Kampachi wasn't able to move since Goku is in his Super Saiyan 2 state. Byakuya was very impressed and looked towards him and said, you are one strong opponent. What is your name? My name is Goku. Hey, speaking of my name, where's Ichigo? Ichigo Kurosaki has returned back to the world of the living. He is there to protect it from Aizen. Wait, what? Aizen already is at the world of the living and Ichigo went without me? Oh man, I need to go help him out. With that, Goku saw that Orohime was okay, as he was very happy that she was making out it safe from Notch Nolches, and from there he saw Chad and Uryu was also okay. From there, Orohime helped 
Goku by healing all his wounds since she saw that Goku kinda did lose some stamina during his fight with Okiyora and all that, and with that she began to heal him up. After healing Goku up, she, her power was able to restore his gi to 100%, as Goku's gi has been returned back to and from there, he looked towards him and said, Alright then, wish me luck, it's time I go and end this bastard Aizen. Wait, I wanna come too. Huh? You wanna come too? Are you sure you got the balls to face Aizen? <laughs> what do you think of me? A coward? Don't forget, I'm the one that pushed you to go your Super Saiyan 2 form. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Alright then, let's go. As Okiyoro grabbed onto Goku and with that, Goku went and he instant transmission to Karakuro Town. On Karakuro Town, Aizen has arrived there with the rest of his Lost Noches Aron cars and with that, they made a full assault towards the 13 Court Guard squad. The captains hold their own against them as they were able to defeat them, but Aizen was the last one to stand. Aizen was now ready to go and fight as he began to go and make sports out of everyone like he did inside the cannon. With that, Captain Genrusa Yamamoto came to stop Aizen as him and Aizen went at it and he used every assault he had just to hold Aizen off but he couldn't as Aizen was able to defeat him and from there Ichigo has arrived as he was already in his hollow form. With that Ichigo went and he strike Aizen from the back but Aizen was able to see it as he was able to dodge it and with that Ichigo went and he powered up a Getsuga Tensho and aimed it towards Aizen. Aizen was able to easily dodge that but he did get hit and when Ichigo saw that, Aizen was instantly regenerating, getting Ichigo to get scared and say, What the hell are you? How is it you're able to instant regenerate yourself? It is that simple, Ryoga boy. I am far stronger than you, and as all thanks to the Hogyoku, I am able to now fully summon it and use its power to the fullest. It's time I go and fulfill my mission now. Not over my dead body! Ichigo went and charged towards Aizen as he tried to hit him but Aizen easily went and brushed him off as Ichigo saw that someone has arrived and that was none other than his own father along with Kisuke and even Lady Yorichi. With all three of them working together to hit Aizen with everything they got too, it wasn't enough. Aizen was easily toying with all of them while Ichigo was fighting with Gin Ichimaru, Gin Ichimaru was also toying with Ichigo. Seeing how weak he is, Ichigo felt very pathetic and he also felt that he might not be able to stand a chance against Aizen because Aizen got to him mentally. Although he did get a little stronger training with Goku and all, Aizen was still able to get through Ichigo mentally as he has revealed to Ichigo that he has been spying on him his entire life. All the battles that Ichigo has been through is all because of Aizen. He was the one who organized all those battles. Upon hearing that got Ichigo to be really shocked and scared as he was about to reveal Ichigo what he is but from there his father has intervened as he took Ichigo and he left. Aizen then looked towards Gin and said, Alright Gin, let's go into the Soul Society. It is time we go to the real Karakura town and create the Oaken. As you wish my lord, I'm here to follow wherever you go. With that they open the door towards the Soul Society as they have now arrived. Goku on the other hand has now arrived to Karakura town and from there he saw that Ichigo was gone along with his father. They went towards the Dorganto so they could do their training as Ichigo's father told him that how he could train inside the Dorganto and with that he has managed to stop time allowing Ichigo to go and train with his Zanpak toe and with that his power continued to increase. Not knowing where everyone is, Kisuke then saw Goku and said, Oh hey Goku, wait what is Okiro doing here? Ha, <laughs> long story short he's one of us. But where's Aizen? I came in to stop him. Well, I'm afraid you're kinda late, Goku. He has already entered the Soul Society. Hurry up. I'll open the gate for you. You could go there. No need. I could instant transmission there. Ready, Okiora? Fine. Wait, if you're gonna go there, Goku, let me come with you. I'm um, sure. With that, Goku saw not just Kisuke, but the rest of the captains wanted to witness this battle as they all were able to get up and they wanted to come with Goku. From there, Goku went and he instant transmission away to words where Aizen was. Aizen on the other hand continued to walk down the streets as he was able to now go and finally use the Hokuku power but before he can, Goku had the transmission right in front of him as Aizen saw Goku and said, Ah, so you have finally arrived. I've been waiting for you wondering how long it will take you to come here. Well I'm here now Aizen and your plan to try to rule the soul society is not going to happen. I'm going to make sure I stop you. Ichigo couldn't do it but I could. I'll do everything in my power to end you right here. <laughs> Is that so? And tell me, why do you want to fight? What are you fighting for? This isn't even your world. Why don't you join me together? 
We could rule the entire universe. Our power will be so strong no one can stop us. I'm not interested. If anything, I've heard this a thousand of times from all my enemies back on Earth too. So you could save the speech for someone else. I'm only here to stop you. I made a promise to protect this world no matter what. Even if I'm here temporarily, I'll protect it temporarily too. Now fight me, Aizen. Oh, Okiora. What are you waiting for? Attack Goku. Goku stared towards Okiora as he could see that Okiora was kind of struggling. And from there, Okiora remembered just how powerful Goku was too and said, I will not. How dare you disobey me, Okiora. He has defeated me. There is no point in me fighting him. So you decided to switch teams? I'm very ashamed at you. It's time for you to die. Before Aizen could do anything to kill Okiora, Goku came right in front of Aizen as he striked him in his face, getting Aizen to fall. Once when Aizen got up, he looked towards Goku and said, <laughs> Very well then, you want to fight me? I'll show you just how powerful I am then. As Aizen began to go and power up his spiritual pressure, Goku was able to sense just how powerful Aizen is and without wasting any time, Goku went and he screamed. <laughs> Goku has now gone and transformed to his Super Saiyan 2 as he looked towards Aizen and said, Alright Aizen, you really want to fight everyone? I'm right here now. It's time I put an end towards this. Everyone was very shocked since this was the very first time seeing Goku use the power of a Super Saiyan 2. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. Ah, I see. So you have used the power known as a what? You call it a Super Saiyan 2? So I see you've been watching my battle with Okiora so you know everything about this power. I know everything. And I'm actually amazed that you feel my power is this strong that you have to use your Super Saiyan 2 off the bat. Very good Saiyan. <laughs> well, if that's the case, how will you stop talking and show me what you got, Aizen? <laughs> Just like Ichigo, I have told him the same thing and I'll ask you the same thing too. Do you know that I've been watching you since you have arrived towards this universe? Watching me? What the hell do you mean by that? Everything you have done since you fought my wrong car, I have been following you, keeping updates and tap. So you can say, I know most things about you, Goku, but you know nothing about me. And as for you, Okiora, you have switched side, that's fine by me. Once I'm finished killing Goku, you will suffer the same wrath. <laughs> you talk a lot, Aizen. And I don't care if you know anything about me, because trust me, what I have showed you since I arrived here is nothing compared to what I have up my sleeve. Is that so? You're one interesting subject. And you're one sick man. Who calls an interesting subject? Okay then, I see that. I was trying to probably show you a little bit of mercy, but I can see you're not disliked to give any mercy. I'm gonna go straight for the kill. As Goku got into his ready position. Eyes into the same, and with that, both of them stared towards one another, and as you know it, their battle has begun. Goku went and he charged right towards Aizen, while Aizen did the same, and both their power clashed with each other, as they were going at it back and forth. <laughs> With each landing blow, the entire Soul Society was shaken, but all the Soul Reapers, all the captains that came with Goku were watching this battle as they're witnessing for the very first time Goku using his Super Saiyan 2 power, but they're also witnessing that Aizen was able to hold his own against Goku, but Goku was only toying with him. Aizen went and he tried to strike Goku, but Goku dodged it as Goku went and he kicked it right in his stomach, getting Aizen to gasp for air, and with that, Goku went and he uppercut him as he came right behind Aizen and striked him in his face. Aizen flew right towards the ground. As he fell down, it took him time to get up, but when he did, Goku saw that Aizen instantly regenerated his wound. <laughs> not bad. I see you have learned how to instantly regenerate yourself. It is not instant regeneration. It is the Hogyoku. It has accepted me as his post, and it will always do everything he can to protect me. That's why I'm undefeated, Saiyan. There is nothing you could do to stop me. 
My power far exceeds your own. Ha! <laughs> you haven't seen my power yet, there you are talking all this nonsense. Okay then, how about I stop toying with you? You? Toying with me? That is right, I was only using Hardy 5%. I'm gonna kick it up a notch. As Goku began to go in power with Super Saiyan 2 key, and with that their second round begun. Goku without wasting any time went and charged right towards Aizen. As Aizen went and he tried to slash Goku with his sword because his sword has the power that once slashed, he could easily hypnotize you. Goku knew about that since he has been informed about it while he was on Wake Mundo from no one other than Okiora. Aizen went and tried to slash Goku but he dodged it as Goku went and kicked him in his face. Aizen was impressed to see that Goku continued to dodge all of his sword slash as he realized that Goku has now realized Aizen's power and that if Aizen was able to hit him, it is over for everybody if Goku falls into Aizen's hypnosis. From there Aizen went and he tried to hit Goku but Goku was able to dodge it as Goku without wasting time went and powered up a Kamehameha wave and aimed it towards Aizen. Aizen went and he was holding it off with his sword as Goku went and he instantly came right in front of his face and with that he striked him. Goku began to go and beat the shit out of Aizen. Using his Super Saiyan 2 power, Goku showed Aizen the difference between him and his own as all the Soul Reapers watching and they couldn't believe how powerful Goku is. Everyone did everything he can using the full power against Aizen where he didn't break a sweat but against Goku, Aizen breaking plenty of sweat as Okiyor was impressed to see that Goku was actually using more power here than he did against him in his battle. From there, Goku went and uppercut Aizen as he saw that the Hogyo Q was pretty much shining from Aizen's chest and that he were to destroy it, it will end Aizen. With that thought in mind, Goku was now aiming for the Hogyo Q as he continued to strike Aizen, throwing a Kamehameha wave and he used an after image as that after image went and used a Kamehameha wave and when Aizen dodged it, he saw it was an illusion as Goku came right in front of him and with that, Goku strike the Hogyo Q, getting it to crack and he unleashed a wave as a wave hit Aizen head on and from there Aizen fell right towards the ground as he passed out. Everyone saw that Goku was able to knock Aizen down as he couldn't really sense any spiritual pressure from Aizen since he attacked the Hogyoku they all felt that Goku has won this battle as everyone was very shocked while Okiura was surprised and said What am I witnessing? He is able to destroy Lord Aizen. My god. <laughs> wow Goku! I never thought your power could be this strong. How in the world are you this powerful, Goku? Something doesn't add up. <laughs> After all, I did tell you I'm a Saiyan. You guys are Soul Reaper. Obviously, I'm far superior to you guys. Hey, don't rub it in. While everyone's very happy, they couldn't believe that Goku was able to defeat Aizen, Ichigo has now arrived. As they all saw that Ichigo had longer hair and everything because he was able to train inside of Dorganto. And with that, he looked towards Goku and said, What the? Goku, when did you come? Same time when you left. How can we left without me, Ichigo? And what is this power you have, Goku? Huh, <laughs> it is a power I used to defeat Aizen. Pretty impressive, huh? My god. I thought that here I am going to ready to sacrifice my Soul Reaper power just to defeat Aizen. Your Soul Reaper power? What do you mean? I train with my Zong Pak Till, and I have learned that as a technique if I use, I'm able to pretty much sacrifice my Soul Reaper power, but it will give me the strength I need to destroy him. Well, no need to do such domestic regers, Ichigo, save that power. I have taken care of business. While everyone was busy celebrating, they then saw that Aizen began to glow as they all turned around and could sense his spirits of pressure and he went and screamed, transforming into his Hogyoku form. You silly, silly Saiyan, and the rest of you Soul Reaper, did you really thought that I was dead by that little move? No, what you have done is awakened the Hogyoku power, and now I am unstoppable. Thank you, Goku. Because of you, I was able to achieve this form. Ah, <sighs> so you're back at it, huh, Aizen? Okay then, how about I go and destroy you now? Huh, <laughs> not so easy. You tried that before, it was against my weak body. Let's see you try this in this new body. Oh, I see. So, before Goku can finish his sentence, Aizen has come right in front of him as he went and he slashed Goku with his sword. From there, Goku got hit and with that, Aizen striked him in his stomach, getting Goku to be sent flying. Ichigo saw that as he went and he grabbed onto Aizen's face and he smashed it right towards the ground. Aizen was surprised to see that Ichigo was able to do that as Goku quickly got up and with that, Ichigo was about to go and make the next move but Goku came right in front of Ichigo as he went and he uppercut Aizen. Aizen got sent flying in the air as Aizen looked towards Goku and said, 
Not bad. You're able to stand up again after that hit? Ah, I see. Your power is really strong. And Ichigo, damn! Your power too has gotten so strong. Yeah, thank you, Goku. I have done a lot of training. Huh, <laughs> you guys are already leaving me in the dust, huh? Well, how about this, Aizen? I can see you're really strong, but you still don't come close to me. How about I even the playing field? As Goku went and he screamed. Goku has now gone and transformed into his Super Saiyan 3. Upon using this power got everyone to be very shocked as Goku's appearance has completely changed and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Eyes on the other hand was shocked to see Goku and said, Who are you? What kind of form have you taken? <laughs> you have seen my Super Saiyan 2, right? You can call this Super Saiyan 3. This is my half power, Aizen. Now you think you're ready to fight me? Half power? You're bluffing! How? Before Aizen could say another word, Goku instantly came right in front of him as he grabbed onto Aizen's face and he flew away from the Soul Society, going to fight somewhere else where there will be no casualties. Upon reaching there, Goku threw Aizen towards the ground as Aizen got up and said, How dare you touch me like that? Well then, Aizen, are you strong enough to hit me? I'd like to see what you can do. Ichigo and everyone followed as he couldn't believe that Goku's power has increased this much and with that they saw that Aizen went and charged right towards Goku and punched him right in his face but Goku didn't move. With that Aizen went and continued use his sword to slash Goku but Goku was sitting still. Goku laughed and said, <laughs> What's so funny? Your power. It is so weak that it feels like a tiny little feather is tickling my skin. Come on Aizen, I expected something better than that. With that, Goku went and headbutted Aizen, getting to be sent flying towards the ground. Aizen had trouble getting up, but once when he did, he couldn't believe that Goku's headbutt was that strong and said, What the hell is he? How is he able to do that to me? Goku instantly came right in front of him and said, It's time I end this. Goku went and uppercut Aizen, and with that, he charged right towards him and striked him in his face. Aizen was completely mobilized by getting hit from a Super Saiyan 3, nevertheless, he was not able to move. He couldn't believe that Goku's power was this strong. With that, Goku went and began to overpower Aizen easily as the whole Goku couldn't handle Aizen's pressure no more and with that, it began to reject him as a host. Aizen, on the other hand, was doing everything he can to try to maintain his power to hold his own against Goku but Goku went and striked him in his face and with that, he looked towards Aizen and said, You are so weak, Aizen. I told you, I don't have to use my full power. That's how weak you are. <sighs> You know why I hate you so much, Goku? You're so strong, but yet, you chose to bow your head and save this place! Why? Join me! I have this nasty habit of always following my heart, and because of that, I'm gonna always stay where I am. With that, Goku powered up a one hand coming in a head wave and said, It's over, Aizen. As he aimed the wave towards Aizen, Aizen got hit head on, and with that, he has died. Goku easily dismantled Aizen by using his Super Saiyan 3 power nevertheless as he was able to overpower him and overtake Aizen's party. Aizen was very shocked and he couldn't believe that Goku has become this strong but at the end of the day he has lost the battle. Everyone was very amazed as they couldn't believe that Goku was able to defeat Aizen like it was nothing and with that they all came to celebrate for real now. Kisuke Urahara was able to get the whole Goku back and from there he decided to make sure he'll protect it forever. But Goku told him to destroy it as Goku took it and he destroyed it with his own fist. Now that it has been destroyed, it is time for everyone to live in peace. While that was happening, back on Goku's verse, everyone began to suspect that Goku is gone as they decide to go search for Goku. If you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and make sure you click that bell so you'll be the first to know about any new Dragon Ball Z discussion what if I make. On Goku's universe, everyone began to notice that Goku has disappeared as they had no trace of where he went. It has been over a few months but for Goku, it has been over almost a year since he was gone. 
That's how time works differently from the Bleach universe compared to Goku's universe. From there, Bulma and everyone began to go search for Goku. As they called Beerus and Whis to help, they weren't able to sense Goku's presence so they decided to go and use the Dragon Ball but they couldn't due to the fact that Goku was already using the Dragon Ball before he left to wish about a Super Saiyan God information and because of that they had to wait a whole year to wish for Goku. From there they decide to go and wait and see what goes on as they have two choices either find a Super Dragon Ball which will take them time or go to Planet Namek and use their Dragon Balls but there's no guarantee that the Dragon Balls has been used or not because the Namekians are trying to you could say renovate their home right now. So it is all left for Shenron to fulfill their wish as all the Z Fires continue to struggle but now they're waiting for Goku and waiting till Shenron is able to be regenerated again so they can make a wish. Back on the Bleach World Goku is now an honorary member of the Soul Society. After beating Aizen, all the Soul Society has given him a pass, a VIP pass where he's allowed to enter anytime and they all honor him. Everybody loves him and respects him since he is the hero of the universe. He didn't plan to be disinvolved with Ichigo's universe but things that's come down to it where he had no choice but to join. Okiyor on the other hand was making Earth his home as he enjoyed living in Karakuro town and he enjoyed their food and that he was ready to be by Ichigo and Goku's side whenever they need his help as Ichigo and Goku lived their life, continued to fight hollows and everything whenever anything came in their way, they were able to stop it. Since Goku had no way of coming back home yet, Kisuke Urahara said that it'll take him at least minimum a year and a half to get everything ready for Goku to get sent back home. Since at first he was bluffing when he said to Goku, when they met each other that he could send him back home but now he's trying to do everything he can to help Goku to get back home. While Goku's enjoying his time in Karakura Town and all, since Ichigo never lost his Soul Reaper power, the Ginjo arc wouldn't really happen. Ginjo's whole purpose was trying to get Goku Ichigo to have the full brain power so he could go and get his full brain and end up becoming very strong so he could destroy the Soul Society and all. But because Ichigo only has his Soul Reaper power, thanks to Goku beating Aizen, he never lost it. And therefore, Ginjo has no way to get into Ichigo. He did try to get into Ichigo by being friends and trying to convince him otherwise, but the Soul Society has been alerted about Ginjo, who is also a substitute Soul Reaper for them, and that he was the one that went rogue. And everyone knew about Goku's power against Aizen, how he's able to stop it and all. They all thought it was futile to even pursue it on Ichigo if Goku's there, so they decided not to mess with that. And that's how the Ginjo arc never happened. Goku and Ichigo continue to do everything they can to work together to protect Karakura Town. And as you know it, a year and a half has now passed since all this has ever happened. And now Kisuke Urahara was finally able to set it where he could send Goku back to his universe. Goku was very excited to go back home since it has been a very long time. He hasn't seen his family, but when it comes to Earth, it has only been six months since Goku was gone. But for Goku in the Bleach universe, it has been over two years. Goku is getting excited to go back while Ichigo came to support him and he will be sad that Goku is leaving, Goku is like an older brother to him but he's also happy that Goku will be able to be with his family. While they are busy trying to help Goku get back home. On the Soul Society. A group of Quincy's has now infiltrated it as they begun to make an attack towards the Soul Society and they start to steal all the Soul Reaper captains Bankai as they have this trick where they could steal their Bankai. And the leader of this was no one other than Yuha Ba. Yuha Ba has now entered the Soul Society as he continued to infiltrate and kill all the Soul Reapers since they had a war, a beef between the Soul Reaper and the Quincy's. With that, Byakuya got assaulted by them as he didn't stood a chance since he lost his Bankai and everyone else. And now it was time for Gen Yurusai Yamamoto to enter the battlefield as he decided to go and attack Yuha Ba. But Yuha Ba was there trying to infiltrate and make ways and plans on how he could destroy the Soul Society. Back at Kisuke Urahara's place, they saw that Yorichi has come as she was in distress and when they asked what happened, she told them everything that's going on in the Soul Society as it's going down and that the Soul Society will be destroyed if they don't do anything to stop it. Upon hearing that got Goku to stop going as he was very close to entering the place before he could go back to his universe but he stopped himself and said, what do you mean the Soul Society is going to be destroyed? Well, apparently the rumor has it now that there's been Quincy that's trying to attack the Soul Reapers and that the leader, Yuha Ba, has a big grudge. He's here to destroy everything. I'm gonna go do everything I can to stop them. Well, I'm gonna go with you guys too. Hey, no need for that. Me and Ichigo go and check it out. Kisuke, you continue to find a way how to get me back home. I'll go with Ichigo and stop this. 
Although I have a chance to go home right now, but I cannot leave the Soul Reaper hanging like that. Goku took Ichigo and he instant transmission to the Soul Society. Once when they got there, they then saw that everything was almost destroyed as they saw that Genryusa Yamamoto was fighting with the dummy but they had no idea who that was. With that, Genryusa was trying to do everything he can to overpower that dummy, Yuhaba, and he was able to now finally defeat him but he turned out to be just a dummy that wasn't the real him. The real Yuhaba has appeared and said, You have failed big time Genryusa. It is time I kill you here. Before he could go and kill Genryusa Yamamoto, Goku and Ichigo has arrived as he was able to sense Ichigo's soul reaper power and said that spiritual pressure is no doubt Ichigo Kurosaki but he's with someone too <laughs> you are now dead Goku has arrived you're gonna die here you haba Goku who the hell is that he's the one who destroyed Lord Aizen I see well then Let's go make our way towards this Goku fella. Goku instead made his way towards Yuhaba as Ichigo was very angry seeing what Yuhaba did and with that he was already inside his Bankai form ready to go and attack him. Yuhaba then met with Goku and Ichigo as he stared towards him and said, It's been a while since I last saw you Ichigo. How do you know me? Who the hell are you? I am Yuhaba. So you're the one who was responsible for the destruction of the Soul Society? That is right, and I heard that you're the one who destroyed Aizen. If you're that strong to be someone like Aizen, I'm really interested in you. Tch, you wanna fight me? Then here I am. Now before I do, as Ichigo charged right towards Yuhaba, and he began to swing his sword towards Yuhaba. Yuhaba was easily overpowering Ichigo as he was just toying with him, and with that, when he made a strike, he managed to go and get Ichigo to fall towards the ground. Goku then saw the, all the rest of the Quincy game as Goku instantly went to his Super Saiyan 2 form and with that he one shot all the Quincy that were there. Yuhaba then saw that Goku was able to do that and said, Your power is not bad. Really? Well then how will you come fight me then? Gladly. Before Goku can blink, Yuhaba instantly came right in front of him and strike Goku in his face, getting Goku to be sent flying as he went and shined some more Quincy power towards Goku and then began to hit him. Goku was surprised to see that Yuhaba's power was this strong and without wasting any time, Goku went and he screamed as he has transformed to his Super Saiyan 3. This is the power I use to defeat Aizen. I'm gonna use this power to defeat you too. Ha! Huh, is that so? I'm interested to see what you got. As their second round begun, Goku went and charged towards Yuhaba as he did the same and both their power clashed with each other and they were going at it back and forth. With each landing blow, the entire Soul Society was shaking but everyone was sensing that Goku has arrived to help them as they was able to finally have hope that Goku was able there to stop them. From there, Yuhaba went and tried to strike Goku but Goku dodged it as he went and punched him across his face. Yuhaba had one trick where he'd use it and it managed to drain some of Goku's power but Goku continued to power up his Super Saiyan 3 key as he went and charged at Yuhaba and striked him in his face but he saw it was a decoy as it was a bomb and it detonated. From that Goku's entire gi got destroyed but he was still standing as he saw that Yuhaba came behind him and said, You're not bad, your instincts are very good. It is because of my instinct I'm this strong. Now I'll give you this one choice. Return everyone's power or you're gonna die right here. Ha! Is that so? I'd like to see what he can do. Alright then watch! Goku went and he screamed. <laughs> Goku has now gone and transformed into his Super Saiyan God. Not knowing he was able to use his form, Goku later on after training with Ichigo after beating Aizen saw that he was able to tap into his God Key yet again and now he was able to use the power as Yuhaba and everyone else couldn't sense Goku's Key at all or any energy since it is God Key. 
He then stared towards Goku and said, What the hell is this? Why is it I cannot sense your power? Huh, <laughs> you have no idea what I am. You could say I have entered the dormant of the gods. Now my power rival that of a destroyer. What is a destroyer? It is something I'm gonna do to you right now. Goku and he came right in front of Yuhaba's face as he striked him in his face, getting him to be sent flying. Ichigo was very shocked. That one hit of Goku got him to be sent flying miles away as he wasn't able to stop himself until Goku and he came right behind him and kicked him in his back, breaking his spine. Yuhaba was completely mobilized as he couldn't believe that Goku was able to be this strong. He has completely have miscalculated because no one knew that Goku had Super Saiyan God power up his sleeve. Goku then went and began to go and beat the shit out of Yuhaba as he saw that the device that he used to steal all the Bankai was right in front of him and with that Goku went and crushed the device with his hand, getting everyone to get their Bankais back. Seeing that got Yuhaba very upset as he couldn't believe that he has failed his mission of destroying the Soul Society, all the Quincy has been destroyed as most of them tried to come but Goku easily went and killed them with the Kamehameha wave as it was a bunch of Quincy they all died by that wave leaving Yuhaba to be the last one standing. Yuhaba then looked towards Goku and said, I have completely underestimated your power, yo that's your fault and now it's time for you to die. Goku went and he beat the shit out of him as he threw him in the air and unleashed a Kamehameha wave as the wave hit him head on and he died right there. Upon using Super Saiyan God power, he was not able to touch Goku at all, as Goku was able to save everyone with the sorrow of the Soul Society being destroyed, and now he managed to go and defeat their number one enemy, the Quincy's aka Yuha Ba. Upon destroying them, got all the Soul Reapers to really acknowledge and admire Goku so much, as they all want to honor Goku by building him a statue, just to show that Goku is now part of the Soul Society forever. The amount of debt they owe Goku is too high, but Goku was not interested in their death. All he wanted to do was protect them and now that he has done so, it is time for Goku to return back. The news spread to the Soul Palace that the Goku was able to destroy Yuhaba and save the Soul Society and even the Soul King as everyone was very thankful for Goku. With that, Goku has went right back to his form as Ichigo was extremely shocked and he couldn't believe the power that Goku has used but when Goku told him that it is the power of a god, they had no doubt because they have seen the stuff that Goku can do, they will not doubt him. With that, it was time for all of them to say goodbye to Goku, as everyone has come to say goodbye and give him a hug and all, until Goku looked towards Ichigo. Ichigo gave him a hug and said, I'll never forget you Goku, you saved my life and my entire world. <laughs> Just promise me you'll always train Ichigo, never give up on your training and that's what is going to get you to be very strong. Well until next time my friend as they shook each other's hand and with that, Goku has now entered the black hole that was created by Kisuke as it got Goku to get sent right back to his universe on planet Earth. Goku surprisingly has arrived there at Boma's place as he saw that everyone was busy trying to look for the Dragon Ball and when they managed to summon Shenron, they then were about to ask Shenron where Goku is but they heard Goku say, Hey yo, I'm back! They all saw Goku as they couldn't believe that he was gone and with that they all ran to give Goku a hug. After all Goku has disappeared for 6 months but for him it was over 2 years. As this is what I believe what would happen if Goku entered the Bleach world. Bleach is a very powerful anime, it's the reason why it will require Goku to use some power but at the end of the day it is required for Goku to toy with them if he wants to have a good fight otherwise he could easily one shot them. Thank you very much for watching and supporting this series. I greatly appreciate all you guys who are out there helping to support this series. And if you're ready to see more of the series like this, drop a like and a subscribe. Make sure you click the bell so you'll be the first to know about any new episode that comes out. And please make sure you check out my backstory hero of Z. It is pinned inside the comment section below. Check it out. Trust me, you're going to love this series.